Good morning, everyone. Children are feeling better. So what did I do? <laughs> First of all, it cracks me up. It doesn't matter if it's children or adults. And children, of course, don't know. They don't have that kind of expertise or, or knowledge yet, you know. And then they're being told all this stuff. <laughs> so it started out with my youngest granddaughter. Stomach cramps, not feeling well, they want to eat, this and that, okay, tummy bug, okay, yeah, sounds like a tummy bug to me, right? Oh, it's got to be something else, oh, maybe, yes, <laughs> it's a tummy bug, so let's treat it as that, right? Yes. Then it didn't take long, it took a couple of days, and my grandson started it. Uh, didn't eat for almost three days. <clears throat> That got enough um, liquids in him, so and, and he's not that skinny, so he's got he's got a few pounds that yeah, in case of sickness uh, he can spare. And uh, and then uh, I wasn't here up the weekend. I came home, started taking care of him, and uh, yeah, so again same thing it looked the same thing to me tummy bug now he's got it you know uh, i guess we're all next <laughs> okay <laughs> and it was like i gave him some oatmeal yes and he ate some of that and he was doing fine he wasn't throwing up anymore or anything and then later on he had uh, some applesauce yep, he was doing good with that too i made him one of my holy grail tea, yes. Then my oldest granddaughter, she suddenly, she was, yeah, she was clocked up. So, oh, I have allergies. <laughs> no, you have a cold. <laughs> they went to the lake uh, a couple of days before, day before, and she most likely got chilled or something. And, and uh, that's how you can, I know that from myself on how if I get chilled, uh, I get yeah, I get one of those, oh, these are colds that uh, you're not spreading to anyone. It's it, at least not it, as far as I know. <clears throat> anyway, so she, here she is. Oh, I have allergies. I'm going, no, you don't. <laughs> I have a cold. <laughs> I'm going to treat it as that. So she was on tea and on on uh, oatmeal and, yes, light, light food, right? Yes, things that, yeah. No milk, no this, no that, cheese or whatever to, to clog up uh, her system more. Anyway, or phlegm causing, yes, foods. <laughs> anyway, so here I've got these two children yesterday. <coughs> <coughs> and uh, it seems like within no time, right? Yes. Anywho. I find it interesting that any time anybody has something, you know, it's like, yeah, I got, I got allergies. Yeah, I got, I got this or I got that. I'm going, no, you don't. You have either a tummy bug, the flu, or a cold. Okay, that's still the majority of things that people are getting. But it seems to be always something different in them. Going, mm. All right. What do I know about people's system, systems these days, right? But that's what I see. It's pretty funny to me. Yeah. And of course, I go with whatever. Um, hey, what am I going to do? Right? So, I have a feeling today, uh, yes, uh, my, my, my granddaughter, I did give her something last night so she could sleep. Right? I didn't think she needed it during the day. Well, four. Right? But then at night, in order to get a good restful sleep, I did give her a little something. Uh, that would you know, cause the, her nose to clear up a little and this and that, so, right, yeah. And she slept like a baby in there. I guarantee you that today she's mostly fine. Yes, uh-huh. And my, uh, my grandson, same thing, yes. He's weak from not having eaten anything, uh, but he's definitely on the mend, and, uh, and so that will take it. We'll take it easy and slow today as well. Huh? Yes. Yeah. And a child, when they don't eat for uh, several days, yes, that can, yeah, one gets weak. I think we know 
all that as adults too. Then you have to regain your strength, eat some good food, yes? Yeah, all right, there we go. Oh, and then I saw it this morning. I always look in the morning, yeah, when I first sit out here and drink my coffee, listen to the birds. The birds here are just amazing, amazing. There are so many of them. And uh, we have a lot of birds at the farm as well. And it's the, kind of the same thing there. We here at the farm, there are many more species there. I can tell. The sounds, you know, the different... Uh, the way they're greeting the morning and all, besides our roosters. <laughs> and uh, here it's always kind of the same, is it? The same, uh, often the same song. There are different ones too, but not as many as we have on the farm. But it's so noisy early in the morning when, the, when it just, the dawn breaks. Yes, yeah, yeah. Mmm. Beautiful sounds, so serene, so before all the hubbub starts with the people. Yes, yeah, wonderful. And then I got to sometimes peruse some of the videos people put on. And I came across one young man playing his little guitar. It wasn't quite a ukulele. And uh, sang this just most serene song, just out in nature, and it's beautiful. The words are beautiful. And just listening, oh. ah. so wonderful to me when others contribute to the peace in your heart, isn't it? That's how I feel like. And uh, <clears throat> pay a little more attention to that. And again. Who's inspiring people like that? Yeah? Yes, who inspires me? Yeah, it's only one entity who does that. Yeah. My heavenly parents. Absolutely. There. Done. <laughs> Have to give it a try if you haven't. It's a wonderful way to live. Regardless. Uh, one of my daughters not this one here, is dealing with a water break. She asked me, she says, Mom, when you were there over the weekend and you took a shower, I said, you have water? I said, yes. In the meantime, something broke and that now needs to be fixed. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, things happen. It's not like, oh, it's, oh, something bad happened to me again. No, these are just, things just break. Man-made, this, nah. Older house, right? Yes. It's just what it is. <laughs> you fix it, done. Yeah. It's a good thing it was discovered, right? Yes. Okay. Now, we're in Judges 20. Mm -mm -mm. The Israelites vowed to avenge the crime at Gibeah. infighting again. The Israelites then all turned out, and as one man, the entire community went to Dan, to Beersheba, including Gilead, assembled in Yahweh's presence at Mitzpah. In Yahweh's presence, uh-huh. All right. The leaders of the entire people of all the tribes of Israel were present at this assembly of God's people, 400,000 trained infantry. 400,000 trained infantry. Why would you need to have 400,000 soldiers to go against one little town? Okay, this is just weird. The Benjaminites heard that the Israelites had gone up to Mitzpah. The Israelites then said, tell us how this crime was committed. And who were the leaders? No names, no nothing. It's just another story, no doubt. The Levite, husband of the murdered woman, spoke in reply and said, The men of Gibeah ganged up against me, and during the night surrounded the house where I was lodging. They intended to murder me. They raped my concubine to death. I then took my concubine, cut her up, and sent her throughout the entire territory of the heritage 
of Israel since these men had committed a shameful act, an infamy in Israel. Now all you Israelites, discuss the matter and give your decision here and now. <clears throat> hmm. Interesting in how this is retold, right? Yes? <laughs> he threw it to the wolves, didn't he? The whole people stood up as one man and said, None of us will go home. None of us will go back to his house. And this is what we are now going to do to Gibeah. We shall draw lots and throughout the tribes of Israel select ten men out of a hundred, a hundred out of a thousand, and a thousand out of ten thousand to collect food for the people so that on their arri arrival the latter may treat Gibeah and Benjamin as this infamy perpet perpetrated in Israel deserves. Thus, as one man, all the men of Israel mustered against the town. To do what? I don't think there's nothing to be get. I mean, this is infighting. This is like a civil war among the Israelites. And it's like, okay, you know what, you guys? You're not following nobody. There's no Yahweh present. And there's no, you have lost all reason. Okay, That's what's going on here. Obduracy of the, ben, obduracy of the Benjaminites. The tribes of Israel sent messengers throughout the tribe of Benjamin to say, What is this crime which has been committed in your territory? Now give up these men, these scoundrels, living in Gibeah, so that we can put them to death and wipe out this evil from Israel. The Benjamites, however, would not listen to their brother Israelites. Mm -hmm. Whoa, that's a long one. The first engagement. The Benjaminites left their towns and mustered at Gibeah to fight the Israelites. Well, weren't the Benjaminites also Israelites? It was interesting on how to separate themselves from a problem that's coming from within. Yeah, you see that? At the time, a count was made of the Benjaminites from the various towns. There were 26,000 swordsmen, and the count excluded the inhabitants of Gibeah. In this great army, there were 700 first-rate left-handers. <laughs> okay. Did you guys just hear that? Oh, they know all about that. Every man of whom could sling a stone at a hair and not miss it. A count was also held of the men of Israel, excluding Benjamin. There were 400,000 men. all experienced swordsmen. They moved off up to Bethel to consult God. The Israelites put the question, which of us is to go first into battle against the Benjaminites? And Yahweh replied, Judah is to go first. Yes, God's going to choose between all the trumps. Go, yeah, you, you guys go first. Let's see how you deal with it. No, come on now, people. <laughs> And Daniela, stop laughing. I can't help it. Uh, if, if, if this were to happen now, I, I, I find it interesting on how anytime there's a war in the world, who, who has to go up against the people first who are warring, the offenders? Everybody always looks to the United States, don't they? Uh, we have that type of reputation, don't we? <laughs> Oh, you guys start wars. No, we don't. The United States doesn't start wars. If you go and read up on all the wars this and that has happened since the United States has become the powerful nation that it is, with all the military grade weapons and with enough people, okay, to go to war and fight for others, this and that, you can go and look every time it's, we were asked. We didn't go there just on our own. We were asked. Every time. Every time. You can go and look it up. I studied. I did that study. So, in any case. 
every time. Well, anyway. Interesting. Judah is to go first. I wonder why Judah. Oh, tell me, Father. Why did you send Judah first? Well, there you go. The answer is I had nothing to do with that. As they did everything on their own. I was completely out of the picture by then. In the morning, the Israelites moved off and pitched their camp over, over against Gibeah. The men of Israel advanced to do battle with Benjamin. They drew up their battle line in front of Gibeah. But the Benjaminites sallied out from Gibeah and that day massacred 22,000 Israelites. Whoa. The Israelites went and wept before Yahweh until evening. They then consulted Yahweh. They asked, shall we join battle again with the sons of our brother, Benjamin? Yahweh replied, march against him. <laughs> okay. The army of the men of Israel then took fresh heart and again drew up their battle line in the same place as the day before. The second day the Israelites advanced against the Benjaminites and the second day Benjamin sallied out from Gibeah to meet them and massacred another 18,000 Israelites, all experienced swordsmen. Hmm. Okay. Hey. Then all the Israelites and the whole people went off to Bethel. They wept and sat in Yahweh's presence. They fasted all day till the evening and presented burnt offerings and communion sacrifices before Yahweh. The Israelites then consulted Yahweh. In those days, the Ark of the Covenant of God was there. Oh, well, looky here. It's finally mentioned again. Oh, oh, they're in trouble. Oh. <laughs> And Phineas, son of Eleazar, son of Aaron, was its minister at the time. Really? They said, ought I to go into battle against the sons of my brother Benjamin again, or should I stop? Yahweh replied, march, for tomorrow I shall deliver him into your hands. So here is Phineas, and he's even asking, do I really need to go against my brother Benjamin. As a people. And God says, yep, march tomorrow. You lost enough people. Ah, oh, sorry, I wasn't there the other two days, right? <laughs> you lost all the people. Ah, oh, that's really bad. Ah, but the third day, right? Third day's the charm. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. It's interesting to me that instead of, okay, they have this big problem, so the Levites are there somewhere. Here's Phineas, and the, son, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, and so they're there. But what happened to Israel? All these places that they settled, the snaps, what's going on? And why would they treat uh, Was, the, was it the whole town of Gibeah who went to this old man's house where they were staying there, right? And uh, this Levite, right, who has no name, by the way. Everybody else has a name. That dude has, doesn't have a name. Neither does the concubine, by the way. I still don't know why she went home, right? That Levite could have been a really nasty husband, you know, regardless. Of okay. <clears throat> so there's no inquiry made. None. Zero. Hmm? And it's not like they already didn't have, well, what's a judge? And again, where are the Levites? I says, okay, we need to figure this out. What, what happened, actually? Why did it happen? Here, they're marching against a whole tribe right, where there was a one town involved and some men. How many were there? How many men went to that house? The whole town? What, the whole town wanted to have sex with one woman? or something, or with a guy. What is that? How does that even make sense? So how many men were there? And why are they not arrested? Why are they not held accountable? But they don't know. As I said, what is this story all about? Again. Right? And then here, God lets two days go by. Right? Even though, both times they consult him, he says, oh yeah, go on, go right ahead. 
but he's not there helping them. He's not there slaying the Benjaminites. You see, what is this? I'm just saying, God's pulled into what? Isn't that kind of telling us on how ridiculous wars are? And how other people, innocent people, are always pulled into this poop? I don't like to say that other word because John Crapper happens to have invented the toilet, which is a wonderful thing. So we shouldn't. Right? That's also why that word exists. His last name is Crapper, right? Yes? So, yeah. Well, and what did we do with it? Right? Instead of, <laughs> how many people have indoor plumbing and a toilet to sit on when they need to go? Uh, anybody ever think, oh my gosh, oh, this is wonderful. And you just flush. Huh? Yeah, anybody. Scott. Indoor toilet. Flushes nicely. This and that. It's privileged, by the way. So, how about, yeah, not using that word, right? No, it's so common. It's really not such a, it's such a disrespect towards Mr. John Cramper. Who invented the toilet just saying all right well so here okay I had to put that in there this is all poop to me here but okay let's keep reading I have no idea if there's actually anything to be had properly all right here we go the defeat of Benjamin Israel then positioned troops in ambush all around Gibeah well wait a minute so the first tribe that went up against them was Judah so how about now? Or is everybody going? Is everybody? It doesn't say. Hmm. Okay. And on the third day, the Israelites marched against the Benjaminites and, as before, drew up their line in front of Gibeah. The Benjaminites sallied out to engage the people and let themselves be drawn away from the town. As before, they began by killing those of the people who were on the roads, one of which runs up to Bethel and the other to Gibeah through open country some 30 men of Israel the Benjaminites thought we have beaten them as we did the first time but the Israelites had decided we shall run away and draw them away from the town along the roads oh and here's the Benjaminites they're also Israelites and uh, and now they got cocky huh yeah after two days they probably consulted God too said hey you know I mean why do we have okay I'm just saying <laughs> Said, yeah, go on, kill your brothers. <laughs> Other side, he said, yeah, go ahead, march against them. Yeah, God had a lot to do with that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, well, you got the okay from the highest authority. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, there you go. I doubt very much God had anything to do with this. But, hey, you know what? There you go. Ugh. All the Israelites then retreated and reformed at Baal Tamar, while the Israelite troops in ambush surged from their positions to the west of Gibeah against, what, 30 men? They said it was 30 men that followed them, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm going with what they say here. 10,000 picked men, chosen from the whole of Israel, launched their attack on Gibeah. The battle was fierce, and the others knew nothing of the disaster impending. Yahweh defeated Benjamin Yahweh defeated Benjamin before Israel and that day the Israelites killed 25,100 men of Benjamin all of them trained swordsmen wow killed 25,100 oh, they must have counted them yes went back and counted every one of them yep that one's dead mm -hmm, that one's dead did you mark that down one two three four five oh yeah okay gotcha the Benjaminites saw that they were beaten. The Israelites had given ground to Benjamin since they were relying on the ambush which they had positioned close to Gibeah. The troops in ambush threw themselves against Gibeah at top, at, at top speed. Fanning out, they put the whole town to the sword. Now it had been agreed between the Israelites and those of the ambush that the latter should raise a smoke signal from the town, whereup and the Israelites in the thick of the battle would turn about. Benjamin began by killing some of the Israelites, about 30 men, and thought, 
we have certainly beaten them. Oh, it was the, oh, that's right. It was the Israelites that were just 30 men. And all the Benjaminites ran after 30 people. Wow, they were really dumb. We have certainly beaten them as we did in the first battle. But the signal, a column of smoke, began to rise from the town. And the Benjaminites, looking back, saw the whole town going up in flames to the sky. Good morning, Ben. Are you letting baby out? Oh, I see she's wearing her thunder jacket. It sure was. Hey, it was. Danny and I, we were standing out here watching it. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was quite some, uh, quite a show. Mommy said you could watch her. Yeah. Of course I can, yes. How are you feeling this morning? Really good. Really good. Well, there you go. <laughs> All right. Rosie's almost done here. Uh, I think she's still sleeping. Let her sleep because she's recuperating just like you are. So she needs to snooze. Okay, so the Benjamin Ben uh, da, 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 Benjamin began by killing some of the Israelites, about thirty men, and thought, "We have certainly beaten them as we did in the first battle, and the second battle." Now they just talk about the first battle. This is the third battle. So, okay. But the signal, a column of smoke, began to rise from the town, and the Benjaminites, looking back, saw the whole town going up in flames to the sky. The Israelites then turned about, and the Benjaminites were seized with terror, for they saw that disaster had struck them. They broke before the Israelites, onslaught and made for the desert, but the fighters pressed them hard, while the others coming out of the town took and slaughtered them from the rear. They hemmed in the Benjaminites, pursued them relentlessly, crushing them opposite Gibeah on the east. Of Benjamin, 18,000 men fell, all of them brave men. They then turned to, oh, all of them brave men. That's mentioned. Yeah, that's, you see, I'm not getting this. They then turned tail and fled into the desert towards the rock of Rimon. 5,000 of them were picked off the roads, and the rest were relentlessly pursued as far as Gideon, 2,000 of them being killed. The total number of Benjaminites who fell that day was 25,000 sword, swordsmen, all of them brave men. All of them brave men. It's weird how this is written down here. 600 men, however, turned tail and escaped into the desert, to the rock of Rimon, and there they stayed for four months. The men of Israel then went back to the Benjaminites and put them to the sword. People, livestock, and everything else that came their way in the town. And they fired all the towns involved. Well, that's the end of 20. A very inconsistent, odd account here of war, a civil war, people against their own people, because of what? What caused that? There's no order among the Israelites, I can tell that right now. And they've, they have their... This is what freedom does sometimes to people. And obviously it's doing it to the Israelites. You get overzealous about everything and you can't you suddenly don't know what to do with all the free air around you and uh, it sounds to me like right right from the start a fear of being oppressed again as I said there's, no, there's so little clarity among the Israelites and what actually their purpose is when it comes to working together with God being the people of God that's what I hear out of here. They are so entrenched in war. Probably the most important thing among the Israelites from very much from the beginning when they left Egypt wasn't to feed their children, to take care of their wives and family. The most important thing was to make sure they had armies, weapons, at the ready, right? And they did really well at that, all of them. And when they had no one to kill anymore for territory that wasn't theirs, 
people that weren't part of the Israelites, they started killing each other. That's what's going on here. It's going on in the world right now. The people in Ukraine and Russia, they're the same. They come from the same continent to start with and from the same piece of land on that continent. Uh, yes? Bet you did just about speak their same, the same language. Yeah. yeah. What would be the difference between, uh, <clears throat> say, um, here's little Switzerland, right? And little Switzerland suddenly is being attacked from, well, which happened in World War II, right? from uh, Germany. Right? They speak more or less the same language. Uh, poor little Switzerland, right? Yes, so here's Italy, right? <laughs> Swiss people also speak Italian, not just German. Right? They also speak French. <laughs> That's on the one on other other side of Switzerland, right? Yes, and then you have Austria. Okay, again, German. As I say, people speak the same language, live so close together, basically have the same beliefs and ideas. Right? Because you live so close together, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what are the leaders doing? And then here, right? the soldiers, huh? So overcome with brutality, they kill everyone again, right? including the animals. Which does not make sense. Whoa, they're infected. They're not believing in Yahweh. <laughs> Come on now. All right. And the insanity continues, right? The insanity from, it's interesting, again, it's the Old Testament, right? Yes, well, maybe they're just stories, isn't it? And why it's in the Bible? This is a very important book, isn't it? Oldest book of the world, I'll print it anyway, right? yes. I'm flabbergasted, <laughs> again. Just as I was flabbergasted when I was a child, and I learned about God and Jesus and how the people were teaching them, how the people were acting. The words and actions did not compute. And as a child, I wondered, hmm, how much does God have to do with all that? What is God? Where is God? Though I had this connection to spirit world. I had this thought yesterday, and I'm not saying I'm right, but I had this thought that religion doesn't teach you about God. Religion separates you from God. The real connection, the, the, the relationship one could have. And it was an interesting thought. Yes. One wants to acknowledge the religions around the world, yes, yeah. that aren't destructive. Oh, is there one that isn't destructive? Tell me. Or that people aren't trying to make into a destructive religion? Even the one, the one that I've acknowledged, okay, at the time in my life, uh, when I was an adult, which is uh, the Unification Church. I still call it that. Now it's the Family Federation for World Peace. Yada, yada, yada. Um, there too. The supposed heir and successor, which is one of the sons of true parents, is, uh, is teaching people how to uh, pick up arms. That's the complete testament age. And it started out so well. <laughs> In a way, right? Yes. Sacrifice was more, selflessness was more uh, of, of a, uh, considered as a substance in your life. And now, the one put supposedly in place, I don't care, I don't need another king or whatever, is, uh, is doing what? teaching people to go to war. 
It's a never-ending story. It's like God just can't win. <laughs> he can't win against our warmongering tendencies. And when people don't have anybody to go to war against, they start shooting, fighting each other. Absolutely sad to me. Yes. So, the song this morning that this young man sang was about don't fade away. If you have, if you are you or I this fat, don't fade away. All we need sometimes is just a little watering. Yes, yeah. Uh, let God's love water you. Gain clarity in your life. And then a little garden shovel, some good dirt and seeds will do a lot more than a gun in your hands. You will have achieved, you will have, you will do a lot more. Oh yeah, well what about if nobody starts to just say no for the right reasons to not fight against each other anymore? There'll be no change for our future generations if they want to make that change or not. They'll be controlled as well. So, it takes just a little willpower. I said, nah, I'm not. I'm gonna start growing food. Like to at least, for the time that I left, bring some food to my family's home. So at least we eat. Have clean water. Right? Yes? I think God can be a part of that. Anyway. Okay. Just a thought. Uh, <sighs> I don't ask. I never ask God to give me healing power so I can put my hands on someone or this or that. I never did that. Uh, though, some people are out there that are really good at this, to snap you. I never did that. What I ask God for, my Heavenly Father, my Heavenly Parents, is please give me the knowledge to do the best that I know how then when someone is sick. Right? Yes, physically or spiritually. Yep, seeing my two grandchildren being sick and knowing what to do and on how they feel better now. Yes. God's green world has so many wonderful things to help us out. Yes, yeah. For a cold, which is a virus, for a tummy bug, which is another virus, for certain other things that are bacterial or a virus. I don't know about your allergies, you people. You probably just need to clean up your act, what you're eating and this and that. Okay? Yes? And as I said, ragweed, for example, is a herb out there. Uh, considered a weed, ragweed, right? That people are highly allergic to, supposedly. I never had a problem with it. And if you eat just a little leaf when it come up, this and that, you eat a little bit of it. And the culprit is also the cure for it. Yes, there are other things out there. You're allergic to pollen, this snap. Find a beekeeper in your area and start taking a tablespoon of honey every day. In about a year or so, your allergies will have disappeared. Yes, it takes that long, you guys. Uh -huh. Sometimes a little less. Just depends on how bad your allergies are. <laughs> okay. Not making fun of people with allergies. There are some out there that have true allergies. And, and, but not everybody suddenly now has allergies. So you take a tablespoon of that honey, which contains all the pollen that you are allergic to, and your body starts to build up a resistance. Yes? Makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, okay. There's certain other things too. 
Well, anyway, but one can also just take a pill. This is just a wonder. I, I'd like to talk to a rabbi about all this sometime. I, I, maybe I will get the chance, but maybe it's better not. <laughs> but uh, just as I said, explain this. You've got to have more knowledge than I do when it comes to all that. And what is that? And do you really believe this was inspired by God? And most likely the answer is, well, it just shows the toils of the Israelites. They were so, you know, really? <laughs> Not getting it. Be interesting, though. Father, what do you think? All right. <laughs> you know the answer that I just got back just, just immediately. <coughs> <coughs> Well, if you want to know how that will go, just read up on the part where Jesus at the age of 12 went to the temple and somewhat confronted the rabbis and what happened. And then what happened so many years later? Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess I got my answer. If I were to have a talk with a rabbi today, it would be a whole lot different than what happened to Jesus with the rabbis in the New Testament. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. I'll keep having that garden shovel in my hands and some good soil and some seeds. Yes, heirloom seeds are preferred. Yes. Mm -hmm. You want to continue growing, don't you? Then they got to be heirloom. Uh, we uh, collected a whole basket of uh, basil yesterday, so I'm going to make some uh, pesto, and uh, we collected seven cucumbers, yes, and we went and looked at the pumpkin that's growing. We have a volunteer pumpkin here. You guys remember I had a volunteer pumpkin last year, and how many pumpkins did it have on it? Twenty, was it twenty-four or twenty-five? This one has one, but it's a beautiful pumpkin. And it's from the pumpkin seeds my daughter just threw out there <laughs> of Halloween last year. And there's one growing, it has the biggest leaves, and it has this one pumpkin that's about this big now. Yes, can't pick it yet, it still has to grow more. Amazing, I love it. My daughter has a volunteer pumpkin here, and I'm here. We found it together. Ah! <laughs> the kids and I. <laughs> Father, you are so amazing. I just love it. Oh, there's my granddaughter. I've got to go. I would like to talk some more. Just a <laughs> She's playing hide and seek with me now. <laughs> She's feeling great. Ah. It's gonna be a hot day. I just pulled the pool out to kind of see and see how my oldest granddaughter is doing. I don't like uh, for them to not all be doing the same thing. So if she is still, if I feel like yeah, she needs another day, hi honey, then the other ones will have to wait as well. Which one day won't, right? Hi sweetie, when it comes to say good morning to the people. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> she loves Cinderella. Can you guys all tell why? <laughs> huh? Ooh. She looks like a princess. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, you said good morning. Now I'm going to have to say goodbye. God's love. Daddy. And blessings. Blessings. And may God protect you. You. Yes, and we will talk to you all another time. And thank you. Ah.